Nancy, what I find so incredible about this is that it took a podcast, your podcast, to reopen the case. So did you ever think it would come to this? Uh, well, I can't lie. I mean, I, I hoped it would come to this. I hoped that at the very, I mean, I hoped that I would solve the murder, to be honest. Uh, that turned out to be highly unrealistic. Um, but, you know, I don't have subpoena power and the office of the attorney general does. And so I, it became more and more clear to me, the more reporting I did on this, on this, that that was the place that was the agency that needed to take up this case. That's the agency that should have taken it up in 2014. Right. Um, and so, you know, I, I think this is a very good step in the right direction. I mean, what was most unsettling about the case? I think the thing that bothers me personally the most, or I find most disturbing is that John Sheridan had a sterling reputation he had served the public for so many years and um, and had been a very public service minded person. And his reputation was completely ruined uh, with the accusation that he killed his wife and then himself. And so, you know, the fact that that has sat there for seven and a half years and has never been resolved and clarified and his reputation has never been fully repaired. Uh, that's what bothers me the most. Well, in 2014, we know the Somerset County Prosecutor's Office deemed the Sheridan's deaths a murder-suicide almost immediately. So what evidence did you find through your reporting that you believe shows this conclusion was just wrong? There's so much. Um, there was an independent autopsy done by Michael Baden that found that the detectives misread the knife wounds and that the size of the knife was very different from the one that was in the room. And hence, there was a the knife that killed John Sheridan was missing from the crime scene. And as you know, I interviewed Dr. Baden, and you know, he said, "Well, it's odd to have a suicide in which the murder, the the weapon is not there." Right. Um, so there was that. They they thought that it was a murder suicide because uh, the the door to the bedroom was blocked by an armoire that had that had either been tipped over or fallen over, and but there was a back door to that bedroom that led to a back stairs. Um, there was a fire poker that uh, was upstairs that belonged at the fireplace downstairs. And John Sheridan had lateral thin bruises across his chest and five broken ribs uh, and a chipped tooth. So um, there were just, the, I would say those are the, that was the most startling evidence that really undermined the idea that it was a murder-suicide. And Nancy, what's the status of the new, you know, AG investigation are they reaching out to people? Is the FBI involved at this point? Right. So all I know from the office of the attorney general, I got one one sentence email that they are looking into the case. Um, I think officially that means they've superseded it, which means they've taken it over from the Somerset County Prosecutor's Office, although that's not in their statement. Uh, but that is part of the process of the attorney general getting involved. Um, I've heard from a few people who have been contacted and, um, you know, on the record, I can say that I have, uh, Chris and Bob Stevens who were close friends of John and Joyce Sheridan and Chris and Bob figure prominently in episode one, because Chris had a three hour lunch with Joyce just a day and a half before her death, um, and was never contacted by the local detectives. So, she and her husband, who at one time actually worked for the attorney general's office, have been interviewed. Um, and all I know from them is that there was a state investigator and an um, FBI agent at that interview. Why the FBI was there, I can't really confirm. I don't know at this point. Um, you know, it, it's a kind of another interesting clue to what might be going on, but I can't really say. I don't know. Right. Nancy, what's been the reaction from the Sheridan family? 
Mark Sheridan, who is one of the four sons of John and Joyce Sheridan, and he's the one who's done really all the, the talking to the press uh, for the Sheridan family. Um, he has, he's happy, he told me, about this new development. I think uh, he was skeptical that really there was going to be an, another investigation. Um, and he was very happy to hear that investigators had reached out to Chris and Bob Stevens. Um, you know, I think he feels that everything needs to be gone back over and, and that that's the first step. And I think he'd also like the Somerset County Prosecutor's Office to be investigated. Like what, because he had such a problem with them. And if he had that problem, you know, maybe other people in Somerset County are having a problem with that office. So I think those are the two things he wants. He wants the case to be solved and he'd like there to be more understanding of why it went off the rails to begin with. So many twists and turns. Nancy Solomon, thank you for sitting down with me to discuss this. If you're not listening, you have to listen to this podcast. You just have to. It's amazing. Thanks.